Now, because her immune system is suppressed, you'll view her through a window for the first weeks, and even that area is clean. So we'll put on caps and gowns and shoe covers. Is she in pain? That's a very good question, because the pain from this could be devastating. Not actually the best response to hear from your MD. But we implanted EBS electrodes in her brain to stimulate the release of endorphins, which are the body's own painkiller. We pioneered this procedure last year. His name is Harry Benson. He's 34 years old. He's the first human being of his kind. They're really going to put wires in it, right? The first terminal man. For three minutes a day, he is violently homicidal. <laughs> Gary Benson is the first of his kind, and he may be the last. Mistakes were made. The family is then ushered into Julia's antechamber for some visitation, exposition, and gormless hand wringing. That's not Julia. It, it's somebody else. Sheesh! What part of brain dead cadaver body did you not understand? She will think like Julia, respond like Julia, laugh like Julia, cry like Julia, because she is Julia. And now, Dr. Matthews proves he's perhaps slightly better suited to dealing with families of patients than I am. Will she sound like Julia? No, you raw-addled peasant! Why the blazes would you even think to waste my time asking that, you dunderhead? The vocal cords will be different. But her inflection, accent, and choice of words will be the same, so you'll adjust to the new sound quickly. Ah. Yes. Shall we go then? Time goes on. Julia's husband initiates phase one of the standard prepare home for ghastly disfigured person procedure. Phase two is break mirrors with thrown whiskey tumblers. Phase six involves buying purple zoot suits. Julia's brain continues making its own gravy, and Mary Frances' husband is swayed by grief and TV pundits. May I help you? I'd like to see my wife. Her name? Mary Frances Bodine. Of course, sir. Now here you are. I have a right to see her. Jack, we explained all this to you before we proceeded. I'm no lawyer, no doctor. Even those guys on TV don't agree it ain't Mary Francis up there. The overwhelming medical legal opinion comes down on the side that it's not Mary Francis up there. All I want is Mary Francis! So, while Jack flips out, unable to accept or understand that his wife is dead, Julia's hubby gets his turn at flipping out over the opposite. Let's try again. No, I can't. Don't you understand? I want you to see Dr. Gordon. Hey! I'm not the one that's crazy. You guys are crazy. You keep talking about my wife this, my wife that. Well, I'm sorry. I just don't believe it. So, proving that, surprisingly, the guys performing brain transplants and unwilling test subjects they keep strapped to a table are the least flaky people in the building. Oi. Shortly thereafter... Ah! She's alive! Alive! Sorry. <laughs> Luckily, the crisis is averted as Dr. Matthews arrives to administer a sedative. Easy now. of reaction. Intense. Involuntary, but she smelled the roses. And that's the key. And we think she's capable of much more right now. Voluntary movement, a smile, a nod, a hand squeeze. But first, we need to turn off the EBS electrodes. Isn't that what prevents her from feeling pain? Exactly, but it's also blocking nearly all outside stimuli. She has no impulse to wake up, and we'd wean her from it if we could, but there's no dial that we can turn down. It's more like a switch that one must turn off. Or you could use barbiturates. 
Now, believe me, I'm the last person to object to shoving electrodes in the brains of uncooperative patients, but there really are some things that can be better handled with pharmaceuticals. Well, that's an extra poor drama. On with the show. Anyway, crap about they need to give Julia some motivation to wake up when they turn the brain box off, namely her one true love, some very nice shots of creepy mid-70s to late-80s experimental medical equipment. It's an acquired taste, admittedly. I'm reaching down now, and now I'm touching your lids. She's going into shock. Consciousness, man. Kathy, one gram solucortep, stat. Open up those Solid fluids. Gordon, get Don in. Down. Don, come in here. Come on, I need you. Now. Wake up. Please, Julia. It's, it's me. It's Don. Don't leave me now. That's it. Go on. You're getting some activity back. Blood pressure, Julia. Please wake up. I've been... I've been lonesome. I, I want you to hold me again. I, Ju... What's wrong? She, she's squeezing my hand. Success! And time for a commercial interruption. Sensational. By leaps and bounds are the enthusiastic words being used by doctors to describe the progress made by Jane Doe. Some time later, after yet another attempt by Jack to see Julia... I'm supposed to be in here, sir. I'm sorry, Dr. Matthews wanted maintenance. I beg your pardon? You can't... Criminy. No locks on the door, and the patient isn't chained down? These jokers act like this is their first brain transplant. Oh. Oh, right. A kindly attempt at an intervention between the two husbands and an Emmy moment outburst. You know, maybe I'll go back to Texas. The worst thing I ever did was leave Texas, but that was Mary Frances' idea. Just like Timmy was her idea, just like everything's been her idea. <laughs> I don't even know what I've been crying about. Damn you. Damn her. We finally see, after half an hour of movie, Julia's complete awakening to full coherence. Husband Don volunteers slash insists on being the one to inform Julia of her new condition, and this scene is actually pretty well handled. Julia? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Do you remember me? Can you talk to me, please? Come. I want you to listen to me, okay? Okay. You look different. The doctors performed an incredible operation to save you. They had to move your brain into another body. Julia? Julia? Yes. Tom? I love you. And I want you to hurry up and get well so we can go home together. Home? Yes. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Hands. No, you... Hurry, me, please. I have to go. It's all right. I have to... Who's talking? Who's talking? Are you the daddy? Oh, it's all right. How's it going now? You're about five foot six, 
And you weigh about 120 pounds or so as soon as we get some meat and potatoes into you. Your hair is lovely. It's a warm brown, almost a walnut color. Let me see. There! My eyes are blue. Well, of course they are, dear. I saw them in the jar we sent to the National Museum of Health and Medicine. So oh, that wasn't what you meant at all, was it? Hi, Mom. Hi, Daddy. Hi there, young lady. You're looking pretty chipper. After a slightly awkward meeting with her parents and a slightly more awkward get well soon gift from Dawn. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Julia finally gets a few moments of alone time for a contemplative self-assessment. It don't go well. Unfortunately, Julia seems to be reacting badly to her new appearance. Looks like we may have to skip phases two and three of the adjusting to ghastly disfigurement procedure entirely, go straight to the bust out of the building and wander around looking for a lair part. I'm here, I'm here. I want the doctor, please, okay? I'm here. Please let me die. I want to die. Oh, the Nobel Prize people ain't gonna like this. la dee da wine, wine, emo, emo. Oh, poor me, I'm a bastard spawn of science. I don't think you should do this again. Are you sure? because I and the whole world will be listening to you on that. Well, maybe if you could ask the person first, maybe then it would be all right. What would you have said? Yes. We get an extended recovery montage, and after some dithering by the doctors... Wine, 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 feelings, 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 utter lack of brain scooping, and it's time for Julia to go home.